It's Yu-Gi-Oh time! Hello and welcome to another figure view. Today we're gonna have a look at the Asage Monster Ars Yu-Gi-Oh! Blue Ice oh, White Dragon, also known as the Blue Ice Right Dragon, the most iconic monster in the entire series of Yu-Gi-Oh! and especially the anime and the manga, which we refer to as Duel Monsters. The early days of Kaiba and Yugi fighting over who is the best duelist. And this ace monster is so freaking iconic. Whenever you think Yu-Gi-Oh, you think Blue-Eyes White Dragon. Dark Magician is a close second, but this is still the rarest card in the series, the most powerful card, even though in modern Yu-Gi-Oh it doesn't mean anything. But that doesn't matter. It's mythical, it's rare, it's special, and I can't wait to get it out of the box. Let's have a look how well SH Monster Arts did. I'm glad I got some time to record this with you because I just had to take a break of how beautiful he is. Oh my god, this is... Already the look of this figure is amazing. Let's see if everything else also lines up. To the top of the head, we're going up to like 18 centimeters. Obviously I have the head a little bit hunched over. I went with what I feel like is a good pose. Uh, so a little over 7 inches tall and I do have size comparisons but for the wingspan hard to tell because he can change the wings but that's also I'd say like 15 15 inches and for your centimeters I mean it's well over 20 centimeters so probably 30 40 actually something but he's big and you can move the wings around so there's no 100% like saying of how large you want to display him but he does have some options. Anyway, let's have a look at the size comparisons. He is Jolter, the SSH figure art Son Goku, Naka Michelangelo, the Figma Seto Kaiba, Vulcan Log Blue Eyes Alternative, Figma Yugi, Vulcan Log Dark Magician, the Mega House Blue Eyes White Dragon, and Dark Side. And before I want to go even further, yes, I do have the size comparisons, but I would just want to have a closer look at these guys together. Especially Kaiba. Well, obviously this doesn't really line up because of Dragon. Well, he varies in size, like, especially in the manga. I think, like, manga-wise, when you got, like, the small projections, this kind of fits somewhat, but overall it still looks great together, and I just wanted to display it real quick. And then you also have the alternative, these three together. Uh, I go back and I remember when I reviewed the alternative like ages ago, that review, I, I'm not proud of that review. If you want to dig that one up, be my guest. But I didn't have any idea that they made like a different Blue Eyes White Dragon. I just reviewed this as Blue Eyes White Dragon and not Blue Eyes Alternative. I didn't know there was a thing like that. But regardless of that, this figure is still okay. It goes with, with the joint, joint wise, it's very similar to this one, but as you can tell, it's very small and it just doesn't capture the majestic feel you got with the Blue Eyes White Dragon. And that uh, is something that this figure does in spades. So, overall look and detail. First and foremost, I do like the size of it, generally speaking. For a lot of other Monster Arts, Godzilla figures I have, he does tower over them. And I didn't really expect that, but I think adding some size to the figure, adding some size to the look makes for a more menacing uh, blue eyes figure and that's really what we're going for here. So, starting off with the head scum, you do have all the wrinkles you have in there and this is also by the way, I don't know if it matters but it, I feel like it's a lot more caught on accurate because in the show the blue eyes head often looked a lot more uh, like a sausage. You didn't have the curve on the top sometimes. Also, most of the time in the show the dragon actually looked blue and not white, but they did fix that and uh, Yeah, I'm just gonna get over to the paint job. What a beautiful paint job it is. You have, I'm not 100 sure if it's pearlescent or metallic, you do have some shine in there, but regardless of how they've done it, I love that you have the white all throughout the figure and then the blue has shading over it. It's a light blue. It looks really impressive and it has this it, it just works because it fades into the white and the shading often with like sh figure arts characters especially in the dragon ball lineup i always talk about how the shading is pretty random it's so scattered not so nicely scattered all throughout the figure and i feel like it fits all the small line work in the neck 
And then the chest area, there's like parts where, it apply, where they apply it a little bit thicker, but not too much. Like, especially the entire chest area, you can tell there's just a little bit on the lower half. And depending on how the light hits it, you not even see it. The transition is so seamless between both sides and you have it a little bit thicker on the arms and on the claws. But still, I mean, the look of it. And then the wings. You have a lot more blue in there, but also it's very cleanly applied in like the inside part. And then you have the white, which is shining out a lot more because like basically where the shadow would hit is on like the deeper parts, the lower parts. So that makes sense and it just looks cool. I'm not, <laughs> I can't even tell like I'm talking about shadow over here, but it just looks so nice. I can't get over that. But real quick, uh, I just want to go back to the head. I got carried away because I just really wanted to talk about the paint. I probably should have opened with that. But then we have also the teeth nicely sculpted and painted. And you do have a movable tongue in there. So you do have some fun with that. But yeah, I mean, overall the look of this figure is... It's one of the best. Uh, I had the, dragon, the um, Blue Eyes White Dragon statue from Mega House. And I would almost argue that this is a better paint job and this is also articulate like the other one is a different style so i don't wanna i don't wanna compare apples and oranges but still and i just look at the back over here nice and segmented in detail you do have all kinds of articulation in there which we'll have a look at the articulation don't worry in just a second and then also what i like for the joints you have like somewhat a little bit of a gray in there and i think it works because it floats nicely into the blue coloring and white joints would have sta would have stood out a lot more. So I'm okay with everything over here. I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. You have the big claws which have a lot more blue on there as well. And overall it floats seamlessly. One part floats into another. There's nothing really that, that rips it apart. There's no part. What I'm trying to say is often we have figures where I said like the shading over there is good and then there's no shading in the other part. But this this character this figure is just chock full of shading everything of it makes sense everything is at the right place and it looks so good and i love it so on to the articulation okay so if you're in any way familiar with sh monster arts you probably know how this is going to work with the articulation everything is either on ball joints or ball hinges and this design works very well with that so starting off with the head you do have the opening mouth we already talked about that goes up that much and you do have the tongue has a little bit of wiggle motion. Yeah, I do have the entire, like a big joint in there. You don't just have the tongue individually. There's like a little purple in the inside of there, that part. The entire part is, I think it's just on a ball. Also, the, uh, you can rotate it around a little bit, which I don't like. I think it, I, I would prefer it just be fixed because that can create for some dirt looks like that. But you do uh, can align it, close the mouth. Not all the way, but he doesn't really do that, I think. Not 100% sure, but uh, it's more iconic if you have him yell. Because it has also an iconic yell, but... <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm fanboying too, li too, a little bit too much for this review, but I'm excited. So, we have the segmented neck. All these parts can be individually moved, but it makes sense to combine all of them, which makes for some beautiful forward motion. Also goes all the way to the back, and you can bring it side to side as well very nimble and another thing is like it doesn't disconnect often i have problems with these things with these some of these godzilla figures where especially on the tail things just like to disconnect and also all part can be individually swiveled you even have a tiny bit of wriggle room when it comes to the fins on the back of his head so you can move that down and up the neck piece which is i think just floating but you do have a ball joint in there just continues the neck part we do have a little bit more going with that. Goes also side to side and can be swiveled just a little bit. Then for the rest of the chest area, we have some more back and forth motion. I'm actually just gonna show you rather than explaining because I think these two parts, chest area actually, do not individually move, but that's fine. You still get a nice arching back and forward motion works very well and also goes side to side and can be swiveled quite nicely, yeah, actually a lot more than I 
expected it to. Then for your arms, you do have another ball hinge. Well, actually a double ball pack in the shoulder. But that part is a little limited. Don't really get that much out of that. I don't know why they made, just didn't make a ball hinge, which you do have in the shoulder. The elbow, that is. <laughs> and then we have another hinge, ball hinge, in the hand. It's like he's holding a glass of wine. Now, I'm just going to go to the back real quick, because what they did over here is really impressive. But also, a little bit disappointing, as, yes, this part is a bit saggy. It likes to sag down, doesn't really stay in place. See what I can do after that? I probably try to pull this one out. Maybe put a little bit of super glue in it, on it and rotate it around. Hoping that will fix it. That's, by the way, like the only part where I have trouble with stability on this figure. Well, maybe a little bit with the wingspan because we do have individual wing parts. You can see it better from the front. All can be rotated out. I don't even know how they're connected in there. Let's have a look at it. Oh, there it is. There's some tiny, tiny ball joints connected to the wings. Be careful with those, because that might break off. Just connect it, yeah, in there. Um, it's tight enough, and it works. And it does for some really impressive wing poses, as you can tell. Move that one all the way out, and can be brought forward and backwards a little bit. Can a little bit shift it to the side, so that... <sighs> Really cool idea, really nicely done, and asks for some imp impressive display pieces. And then you have another ball hinge on the part where it kind of goes to the side for the tail. I mean, I showed you all of these parts individually movable, so you can actually curl that all the way up and bring it down nicely. You gotta give it a little bit more of a tuck on the upper part, but it does work, goes all the way down. And then move it to the side. Yeah. <laughs> it works so well. The articulation is so seamless. It's fun. It's easy to pose. And then we have the legs. Once again, same problem as we have as we had with the shoulders. Do we have a ball joint in there, but you can only bring that up and down and just move it around basically in the socket. Which I'm fine with. I mean it looks so nice if you would have hollowed this out all the way up there. We would have been able to move the layout, but it would have looked like crap, and I don't like that. Then we have another ball hinge in the knee, which makes a weird noise, but it's stable. You can also swivel it on the lower half, and then you have, for the foot, actually, there's a ball joint in the upper part of the ankle. Then you have a joint which is connecting, is there to connect the foot to it. Somewhat loose, but I again, I didn't have any trouble trying to pull this guy. Beautiful pivot. And there you go. I mean, articulation-wise... It works. It just freaking works. Usually you don't get any accessories with a lot of these SH Monsters reviews. I mean, I, I watch a lot of Godzilla reviews and it's kind of depressing. But with this one, you do get the essentials. You do, you do get what you need. So we do have the energy effect, which is like the... Uh, they call it like white lightning in the show. It's like the burst, burst stream of destruction, right? Anyway, um, names. We do have the energy ball inside of the ass with some blue see-through lightning. It is semi-transparent because it is painted in some parts and other parts it isn't. That's what semi-transparent means. Uh, the, but uh, you also have the light beams kind of coming out of it which are light blue on the tips. And it looks for, makes one overall very cool looking display piece. Happy with that. And for the rest of it, you do have the base. Four packs. One for the action part then we have this crotch cradling device which by the accessory uh, by the instructions supposed to just kind of lay on here it's not great I wish it would tuck on a little bit more but I think this like the lower half handle the crotch it does balance on there so it does work again I just always prefer a hard connection and you do have the pack on there so you do pack that in the base we do have the pack still in there and then you have for some more flight poses. I guess that helps as I talked about how we have a little bit of problems having the wings, keeping those up. So we have the wing clamp, which you have that on both sides. I think one of them just fell off, but uh, do have that actually. It's on both sides, but let me look at the box real quick. Where's my clamp? Frick. 
Uh, there's the other clamp. Which is also removable, as you can tell. If you don't want the clamp, if you have something to pack it on there, you just have a pack. And you can remove this part. And then you can also can remove, actually you can't remove, remove any further. Did I? Did I? I thought you could. Yeah, there you go. Can I also remove this part? Can you remove the lower half? No, you can't. Alright, so if you want, don't hold on at a shorter range, you can do that. And if you want the longer range, you can put all of these back together to give you some more option for, I would say, mostly flying poses. I was super worried that this figure would be an absolute brick and just fall apart because they put up all these wing holders and whatnot, like all these parts to hold them up. But no, you don't need it. If you want to pose them without, that actually freaking works, and I'm super happy about that. Final thoughts, and I'm sorry if this has been a bit rambly and I've been gushing a lot, but I'm so excited! Let's talk about the one thing I haven't really talked about is the price point. Yes, this figure ain't cheap. Will cost you, if you get it from Japan, around 100 bucks. If you have to import it, it will go up to like 150, 160. Somewhere along those lines. And then, as I mentioned, ain't cheap. But let's consider what we're getting for that. A beautiful looking blue eyes figure with just the best paint, one of the best paint jobs I've seen in a long time. Size of it is also a little bit over what I've known the average for Monster Art, so it does have its presence. Any articulation just works with the design and it's executed very, very well. Other than that, yeah, I do have some joint tolerance issues. Just not really issues. I have the one wing that keeps kind of flapping down. And then I could say that, well, maybe, maybe the ankle joints could be a little bit tighter. None of it is very floppy. None of it is at the point where I can't even pose them. I'm just saying if those things were just a tiny bit tighter, you could have done more poses even. But that's barely complaint. That's just something to keep in mind if you want to buy this figure. So, my verdict is I 100% chef's kiss mwah, recommended on this guy and I'm excited for more. I already have the Radar's Black Dragon on pre-order and I hope, I hope SH Monster Arts continue to put out Yu-Gi-Oh! Monsters, Dark Magician, Dark Magician Girl, Exodia, even like the Gods, Obelix, Slife, oh my. I, I'm getting ahead of myself. So I'm just gonna end it right here. Again, recommend that to everybody. I don't care. It's so good. It's so beautiful. Uh, that's gonna do it, guys. As usual, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, if you enjoyed this review, hit it up with a like and subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for more figure reviews, card game stuff, and whenever the blue eyes white dragon wants.